Hey there, I'm Terry from True Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this bar. This is a marbling technique and it is the technique featured in the July of 2020 soap challenge. If you're not familiar with the soap challenge, it's hosted by Amy Warden and every month there's a different challenge and I would really encourage you to check this out. This is where you can learn so much. I left some links in the description below if you want to find out more information. Okay, let's get started. First, I add about one third to one half of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes. I do this because the fumes aren't as bad this way. Really, I can't smell them at all. And also it helps it cool down more quickly. Next, I just top off the remaining water weight with cold distilled water. Next, I measure the sodium hydroxide. And if you haven't learned about lye safety, it's very important. So before you get started with soap making, make sure you learn all about the proper safety precautions. I left a link below to a helpful video. I carefully add the sodium hydroxide to the water. You always add the sodium hydroxide to the water and not the other way around because otherwise it can volcano. Then I measure the sodium lactate. Sodium lactate is just an ingredient to make your bar a little harder, which makes it last longer. Also, it helps it release from the mold. It's a natural ingredient. Actually, it's a liquid salt. Next, I set these ingredients aside in a well-ventilated area that's safe for many kids or pets. Now that my lye water is cooling, I measure my coconut oil and I melt that until it's just barely melted. While the coconut oil is melting, I go ahead and measure the liquid oils, starting with the avocado oil, then the castor oil, and finally the olive oil. Since I'm measuring all these ingredients together, I use little squeeze bottles with each of the liquid oils in them, and I just top off the ingredients so I don't go over. Next, I measure the cocoa butter pastilles, and then I measure the shea butter. Just a little reminder that I share tips throughout this video and I also have a what I learned section at the end of the video when I'm beveling my soap, so stay tuned to the end of the video or you might miss something. Next, I add the shea butter to the melted coconut oil and I microwave this very gently until it's just barely melted. It needs to be clear though, but you don't want to get it too hot. The fragrance I picked for this soap is called Jade and it's from Brambleberry and it seems to go so well with the marble theme. It has a cool smell to it. It has a fresh smell. It's very unique and I just love it. It's well behaved. It doesn't discolor or accelerate. Okay, that shea butter is completely melted. Now I add the cocoa butter and I just stir that until it's completely melted. And if it needs microwaved a little, I just microwave it until it's just barely melted, but clear. Next, I'll prepare the colorants. And my first color is smoky black mica and my second is gold rush mica. And these are both from Elements Bath and Body. I'm mixing these at a rate of two to one. So I'm mixing a tablespoon of the colorant with two tablespoons of olive oil. For this soap design, it kind of requires randomness. So I wasn't able to calculate like I normally do. And I just needed to somewhat wing it when I'm doing the colors and I was hesitant to even do this and I took forever to start it because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it but actually it was super fun and I loved winging it. You'll see later that I'm using two different colors for a mica line in my soap and one of them is the gold rush mica from Elements and the other one is smooth coconut carbon also from Elements. I used a powder sprayer to spray my mica line. I got it at Brambleberry, but you can also get them at Mad Micas under a different name. I believe it's a mica spray pump. Next, I add the liquid oils to the melted hard oils and I set them aside. Now that my lye water is cooled, I add the sodium lactate. 
Isobit temperatures between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 29 to 35 degrees Celsius. I am doing this batch a little differently than I normally do. I am individually dividing the lye water separate from the oils. So I'm going to have nine parts, kind of like layers in my soap. So to figure that out, I weighed the pitcher and the contents, and then I subtract the weight of the pitcher, and then I divided that amount by nine. If you do your layers like this, I would suggest separating your lye water and your oils right away like I'm doing instead of doing it for each layer. Because if you measure wrong and you end up with odd amounts at the end, you don't really know where you went wrong. But if you measure it right away, you can dump it back in the pitcher and redo your math and figure out the right amount and no harm was done. So here I'm dividing the lye water off nine ways and I'm using these cups. They are polypropylene. They are the recycle code number five and they are okay for lye water. You could use polypropylene or high density polyethylene which is a recycle code of number two. Now of course these cups are never to be left unattended because they have dangerous lye water in them and also they are never to be used for drink anymore. They're dedicated to soap making now. So next I do the same thing with the oils. I weigh the bowl and the contents, subtract the bowl weight, and then I divide that number by nine, and then I just divide it nine ways. Off camera, I added one teaspoon per pound of oils of kale and clay to each of those pitchers and I mixed that in thoroughly before I added the lye water. Also for time constraints, I didn't show me adding the fragrance oil. I added one ninth of the fragrance oil after the batter was at a thin trace. Here I'm just getting ready my first layer, just pouring off a little bit to color a different color, and I'm stirring in my titanium dioxide, which I diluted at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to three parts of olive oil. For the accent color, I just used a little of that smoky black. I'm using a nine bar slab mold for this. It is a custom mold that my husband made for me, but Brambleberry has one similar. I'm planning on cutting these bars vertically, so it's basically like two 10 inch loaf molds side by side and then cut vertically like normal. As you can see, I elevated one side of the mold. I probably elevated it about an inch and a half or around four centimeters. I did this because I didn't want all my layers to be straight and you'll be able to see that kind of the second half of the pouring, they do get a little more straight at the end. So this first part of the pour came out the best, I think, because the mold was more slanted at the beginning. The trace for this first pour was medium trace, and I liked that it didn't just flatten out. It was a little rough, and that worked out well because I didn't really want straight lines. For the second layer, I added titanium dioxide and then I added a little bit of the smoky black drizzle and I gave it a slight stir. Once I finished that, I decided to use my powder sprayer and spray a layer of gold. For my third layer, I decided not to color with titanium dioxide. I just wanted it to be the soap batter color, and I did add a drizzle of the smoky black mica along with the gold rush mica, and I gave it a slight stir. The next layer I used titanium dioxide to color it. I poured off some and I left this one at a little bit thinner of a trace and I used the smoky black mica again with a little drizzle of the gold rush mica. And I poured this from varying heights so I can get it throughout my pour.
This layer was a little different. I poured off some before I added the titanium dioxide. And then I added it, but I didn't stir it in very well. And the same with the gold. I added it, but I didn't stir it in very well. Then I poured that from varying heights, and I poured the smoky black drizzle from varying heights as well. You can see that Trace was a little thinner here and the colors got a little muddled, which is fine for this, but if you don't want them to get as muddled, you need to pour at thicker Trace than I poured. Since the batter was getting a little higher up in the mold, I had to level it out a little more by taking a few props out. And then I colored a little batter gray and added that and then a little bit of gold drizzle. And I forgot to press record earlier when I put a little dusting of gold on the previous layer. I poured this layer and then added a dusting of the activated charcoal or smooth coconut carbon. For the next layer, my accent color is gold. And again, I stirred it in slightly and I did the same thing with the titanium dioxide. Next I drizzled a little bit of the smoky black from varying heights and then I added the gold batter from varying heights. After this layer I added a dusting of the gold rush mica. For this layer, I split off the batter for two colors and I dropped it in the white batter from varying heights. For the next layer, I did the same thing as I did for the previous layer. When I was finished with this, I did not oven process it. I just covered it and let it out and it heated up quite a bit. Usually when you're dealing with thicker slabs like this, it heats up rather easily. So you don't really have to worry about oven processing it to get it to fully gel. I left the soap in the mold for 48 hours and I did that because of the mica drizzles. I wanted to give the oil plenty of time to reabsorb into the soap, leaving behind the mica lines. So I've already removed the freezer paper and I planed off the sides and then I used a log splitter to split the slab into two logs. This log that I'm cutting now is the last part that I poured and I'm not as happy with it because of the lines. There's more distinct lines in this one. I really do like how all of them came out, but wait for the next cutting of the next log. I feel like that one is the one that I really like.
This is my favorite loaf and again it was the first part that I poured so it had more angles and the angles were even a little thicker when I poured them so they didn't get flat and I really love that. I love the interest in these bars. They just have so much going on and I really enjoyed this and I think you should try it. It was a little out of my comfort zone at first. You know how I like to figure things out ahead of time and with this you couldn't do that because you don't want it to look uniform. You want it to look pretty random. So this was so fun for me. I really look forward to doing more like this and I love this marbling technique. And now let me tell you a little bit about what I learned from this batch. First, let's talk about the drizzle. Make sure you try to get that line really thin because if you get it too thick, it will not absorb into the soap. I've had this on other batches, especially if you get it on the edge of the batch. Usually anything inside will absorb, but the edge stuff just kind of washes off. Inadvertently with this design, I learned a little more about the cosmic wave technique. If you're interested, I have two videos on that technique, but what I learned was when you pour more quickly, it seems like the zigzags look better. Also, the top part of the pitcher pours much better and the bottom part gets kind of muddled. So about halfway through your pouring, it might be good to add a little more batter or a little bit of a drizzle on top and that will get you better zigzags on top of your cosmic wave design. For this technique, the best trace is to have it about medium trace, but not quite. So start with a light trace and wait until it gets thick enough to where it's not going to be kind of watery. And also your fragrance that you pick also plays a part in that role. You need something that won't accelerate too fast. A lot of times in layer soaps, I use fragrances that do accelerate a little bit because that helps the layers get set so you can pour the next one without breaking through. For this, you want your layers to set up. So I pretty much always use clay in my soap when I'm making a layer soap. So that's a little pointer that if you want your layers to set up more quickly, clay usually helps. Another thing that I learned is that I really liked the difference between the batter that was not colored at all and the white batter. I think it offered a nice contrast and a little bit more interest to the bar, maybe a little more depth. If you feel like you've learned something today, please give me a thumbs up or add a comment. Or if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And that will let you know when I post my next video. If you're interested in buying any of my soap, I have a website and you can just look up treemariesoapworks.com and look for the soap or I sell some of my recipes. So if you're interested in that, I just have a few recipes that are for sale and they're paired up with the videos that you see here. So it, it goes right along with it and um, gives you all of the ingredients, actual amounts and the supplies needed with links to where I got them and it's very helpful. If you didn't already know, I have a Facebook group that is for soap makers and it deals with all skill levels. You can be a beginner or an advanced soap maker. And it's a place where we just share and encourage one another. To get in, you need to read the rules and answer three questions. And this is my way of filtering out people who don't really have a genuine interest. So if you asked to join and you haven't filled out the questions, that's probably why I haven't let you in. So just go back and take a look at that. The group is called Tree Marie Soapworks and I do have a business page called the same thing. So make sure you find the group. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.